Thank you for choosing to watch this sermon preached at Heritage Baptist Church. Heritage Baptist Church is located at 1843 Peaksville Road, Locust Grove, Georgia, 30. and that they compose the entire Word of God. The scriptures are an errant, infallible, and God-breathed, and therefore are the final authority for faith and life. The 66 books of the Old and New Testaments are the complete and divine revelation of God to man. The scriptures shall be interpreted according to their normal grammatical historical meaning. The King James Baptist Church. All right, let me give you something. Let me give you something. Hey, y'all, real quick, want to give you a devotion. Want to give you something that really to me, how many of y'all, how many of y'all, this is, uh, y'all have been here for a pretty good while. Y'all been coming. Anybody, this is your first time? All right. Nobody's first time, I don't think. You know, every time that I deal, every time that I deal with what I'm going to talk to you about is I realize that when you, if you hear the gospel like me, when I heard it as a young guy, uh, I rode in on the church bus. That's how I got going, going uh, got coming to church. They came and picked me up. And so I started riding in. And when they did that, I didn't know anything about the Lord. I didn't know anything about church God. Uh, and so I started learning about all these different things, okay? I started learning about, uh, you know, salvation. I learned about that Jesus died. I, I learned, how, you know, how to get saved, all of that. Um, as I've been in church for a long time, I've, you know, you, uh, you learn a lot more. I learned about, I've been preaching this week. I preached a couple of times about the Lord coming back. Jesus, did y'all know that Jesus literally, the Bible says, he says, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, there ye may be also. The Lord says, I'm going to come and get you. Now we say, preacher, I know that when I die, he comes and gets us. No, I'm talking about, the Bible says that we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them, you know, to meet the Lord, to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. The Bible, that, that being caught up, God saying one day he, when he comes, he's going to take every saved person with him at one moment. Now that's a doctrine in the Bible. Uh, how, many, ever, how many of you have ever heard of the rapture? You've heard of the rapture. All right. Then, you know, they make movies about that. They make movies about the, when the rapture takes place. Think of it. The Bible says in Matthew that two will be in the bed, one taken, the other left. The Bible says two will be in the field working, one will be taken, and the other left. Now, that's not a ratio. It's saying that the Lord is only going to come back for people that have been truly saved. Now, if we're not careful, here's what we say. Uh, I've known through the years, in fact, I've seen people that have gotten saved. And oh, what a blessing when they get saved. But, and you know, if somebody bows on their knees, they put their faith in Christ, and, and I mean, boy, God changes their life. Think about it. When he came on the inside, when I got saved as a teenager, now, I mean, teenager, going to high school, and just wide open with it. But when I got saved, the Bible says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. Now, I didn't get, I didn't, I'm not tell you, I was not a perfect teenager, but I want to tell you something. I changed. I mean, I changed. Not because I just want, I mean, but when the Lord saved me, He changed my life. There was a change that I noticed. 
I noticed that, you know, the Lord would really condemn whenever I was doing something wrong. He would really, and my, I mean, in my heart, nobody else knew that but me. But I mean, boy, if I did something wrong, I felt what the Bible talks about is conviction. Or we, did, we call it conviction, that's that guilt of sin. I found this. I found that I wanted to go to church. I mean, I really desired to. I didn't just, I mean, I didn't just go for the, we got a lot of fun stuff today, but it wasn't, it was more than that. The Lord changed me. And here's my greatest fear, my greatest fear. You know, I, when I preach on hell, I don't want anybody to go to hell. You don't want people to go to hell. I don't want people to go to hell. If I said there's heaven and hell, which one do you want to go to? Everybody says heaven. But you know what my greatest fear is? What if there's just one young man sitting here that you've, maybe you've told everybody, yeah, I'm saved, I'm good. And what if you're not? What if really you're not? Well, girls, same way. Greatest fear would be, what if, what if you know, you, you tell everybody, if I, are you saved? Oh, yeah, I'm saved. And it's easy to say. It's easy to say, yeah, I'm saved. Yeah, yeah, I've done that. But see, when I say about getting saved, I'm not asking you if you prayed a prayer one time. Everybody prays. Anybody, if you, if you know who Jesus is, hey, Jesus, I, I, and you ask the Lord for things. I prayed before. I, they had altar calls, and I'd go down, Lord, help me to do better, and Man, I tell you, when I got up from praying, I felt good. I prayed. I mean, what's wrong with prayer, right? But see, the, only, the difference was the night I got saved, that night changed my life. Now, I want to give you a verse that, often, that troubles me because this is what's going to happen when people meet the Lord that are really not saved. In heaven, this is what the Bible gives us, and uh, uh, Jesus is talking about it. And by the way, the Son of God said this, all right? This is what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 7. Let me read it to you. In Matthew chapter, chapter 7, he said, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. Now, man, just reading the first part of that, what do you mean, not every man that saith, and everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord? In other words, he's saying there's plenty of people that say, oh, yeah, yeah, I go to church. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm good. Yeah, yeah, I got saved way back yonder. Of course, my life never changed. I still talk as wicked as I ever talk. I still live as wicked as I ever live. If there's a chance to do wrong and I'm with my friends, I usually take it. Now, I mean, I don't know you. I don't know what all you do when, when you're not around your mom and dad, or around others. I'm asking what you are when nobody else is around. Who are you? What kind of young lady are you? What kind of young man are you? And not just you yourself as far as just, well, I, 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 I do. I'm saying in your heart. You see, when I got saved, the Lord changed me. He made such a difference, it was unbelievable. But here's these people, that change never took place. Not a real change. They may have adapted their behavior a little while to fit in with everybody, but the Lord didn't change their life. They may have done good around their mom and dad for a little while, but the Lord didn't change their life. And so Jesus says, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. The Bible says, But he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Well, see, I know what God's will is. The Bible says, The Lord is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. See, that's God's will. God wants everybody to, to, to get saved. But then here's what the Bible says, many will say to me in that day. Now, that's not just one person. That's not just some. He says many. So even with just, just the, the young ladies and the young men we have right here, if I said, y'all, the Bible tells us if it says many, that you say, oh, preacher, maybe there's one over here, there's one over here then what does that word many mean? A whole lot. More than we think. More than we want. He says, many shall say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name have done many wonderful works. You see, they started naming everything good they've ever done. And prophesying, man, that's like preaching. 
That's like telling people about the Lord. I mean, they did so, now see, this was not even people that, that, that just lived wicked. These people actually did some Christian things. These people maybe went to church. These people maybe rode in on a bus. And they came to Sunday school. You see, when it, when it gets down to it, though, I'd love to be able to one day when we stand before the Lord that as the pastor, I stand with you. I wish I could stand with you and vouch for you and say, Lord, they rode in on our church bus. And, and they're, good, they're good guys. They're good ladies. And, I, and, and Lord, I, and I wish I could speak for you, but it's not that way in that day. I wish your mom and dad could stand up and say, they're, you know, they're good kids and, and they love us and they love their family. And they, but you understand, when you stand before God one day, it's an individual matter. One man and one God. One young man, one God. One young lady, one God. Nobody else. Man, the Bible says, talks about it, it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. I can't imagine on that day standing in front of the Lord. Because see, you know, when the Lord, I, I, when I preach on the Lord coming back, we talk about how it's going to be sudden. It will. I mean, it's like that. It's a moment, twinkling of an eye. It's going to be shouting. I mean, for the saved person, boy, you're in the presence of God. It's going to be wonderful. But then I say this, it's going to be shocking. Because there's going to be people that thought they were saved. People that said, well, again, well, I know the right stuff. See, but the Lord doesn't say, have you heard and know the right stuff? See, the question is, do you know Him? And you see, the Lord's about to say that. They, these people are saying, Lord, uh, they're trying to argue with God. I mean, the, the Lord just said, uh, not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, will enter into the kingdom of heaven. And these people are saying, but, but we prophesied and, and, and we've cast out devils and we've done many wonderful works. But see, that's the problem. You know, the Bible says, not by works of righteousness that we have done. In other words, it's not what we do. The Bible says, for by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It's the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Let me help you with something. I'm the pastor of this church, right? I get up here and preach every single week. I am not going to heaven because I'm the preacher, because I have a position. That ain't happening. I'm not going to heaven because I stand up here and preach. Preacher, that's a good work. That's a wonderful work, just like they said here. But I'm not trusting that wonderful work to get me to heaven. Like, boy, if I can preach enough, I might go to heaven when I die. You can't do enough, you can't do enough good works, because works can't get you there. Think about it. If you could earn your way to heaven by yourself, Without, without doing, on your own, you're, what you're saying is, I don't need Jesus because <laughs> I'm going to earn this myself. I could do enough work to get myself to heaven. But see, here's what Jesus, by that next verse is what, oh, brother, I could not imagine standing in front of God and him saying this to me. And I would never want you to stand in front of God and God Almighty to say this to you. The Bible says, and then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. And see, the Bible tells them that they'll be cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. If we're not careful when we're around, around yeah, yeah, I'm saved. I'm good. I'm all right. I know who Jesus is. But you see, the Lord takes it a lot more serious than that. See, God doesn't say, do you say it with your mouth? The Lord says, do you know me? Here's what he said. And, and, and the Lord knowing us, see, when you, when you put your faith in Christ, you become his child. You bow on your knees. Dear Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner on my way to hell. I can't get to heaven on my own. But dear Jesus, with all my heart, I believe you're the son of God. And today I put my faith in you and you alone. What happens at that moment, Christ forgives you of your sin, comes in your heart, he gives you eternal life that moment. And brother, he's in there till the day you die. And one day when you stand in front of God, you don't say, I, I prophesied, I did this. You say, Jesus, do, don't you remember when I bowed on my knees and I put my faith in your son, Jesus? I asked Jesus to come in my heart. I asked you to save me. And Lord, I believe the word of God and you did that. You see, that's how you get saved. See, a lot of people, they just, they just know. 
And then a lot of people, the shock at the, look, I, I, if I, I cut up with everybody, I, Nick, Nick comes all the time, but I'm telling you, Nick, if, if I honestly thought, or if you thought, no, I really didn't get saved. If I died, I'd go to hell. I'm, I'm telling you, man, I couldn't, I couldn't stay and see. Because think about it, in that day, we all stand in front of God one day. Did you know that the Bible tells us in Revelation that every single one of us will be in the presence of God? And look what it says. And, and this is, uh, could you imagine mom and dad's in heaven and their children standing in front of God about to be cast into hell? Could you imagine uh, a brother or sister, you being in heaven and them being over there? Or could you imagine if it's you and you look over there and see different ones that were saved, but you're not over there with them? Because see, here's what the Bible says in Revelation chapter 20. The Bible says, and, the, and I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away. There was found no place for them. I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were open. And another book was open, which is the book of life. And boy, he, starts, he goes on down through there, and in verse 14, And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. Listen to this. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Now, y'all, I'm, I'm just picturing this scene we're human beings standing there. I mean, God Almighty is on His throne. And we, we're, we're standing there not because we're a child of God. All that crowd's over there behind Him in heaven. But you see, if we're sitting on this side of it, and God's dealing with us individually, I, I just, I, I use Nick again. Nick, I could not imagine if I'm up in heaven, but I'm looking and I realize, whoa, Nick rode in on the bus. Nick came every week. Man, or, or, or man, Nick was involved. Nick, Nick went on, on camps with us. And, and, but see, the, and, you, and you start saying all that. And God, I, and I've done this, and I've done that. And he says, depart from me. I never knew you. There's no second chance standing in front of God right there. I'll pray now, God. I'll ask you now, God. I'll get on my knees now, God. I'll, I'll get saved now, God. It's too late. It's too late. You see, what God did, He sent His Son to die for us. And He lets us right now in this life hear about His Son, Jesus. And He lets us have the privilege of being able to put our faith in Him. Now, I mean, man alive. And see, the bad thing is, if I'm over there in heaven and I'm, tears are running down my face and I'm calling out, Oh, Lord, please give Him another chance. It doesn't matter. You see, what you do with God, you've got to do it now. You've got to do it here. Now, the Lord loves you. Think about it. He lets us in at different times be able to hear about Jesus. He deals with our heart at different times. The worst thing you can do, the Bible says, if you hear His voice, if He's dealing with you, He says, harden not your heart. If, I, if you're saved, there's no way in the world I could ever preach anything that would make... I mean, the more I'm preaching right now, if you're saved, you keep going back to that day you got saved. You're like, Lord, I, I know, I know that's what I did. I know you came in my heart, and I know you changed my life. But if honestly, you're just, well, you know, I've never been that serious about it. Church is no big deal. I mean, I may go every once in a while, but honestly, my life is my life. God's not a part of my life. He doesn't deal with my heart about anything. I can do wrong. and it, In fact, I, when I do wrong, it don't bother me a lick. The only time it bothers me is if I get caught. Now, there's something wrong there. Because the saved person, God will deal with you. I wonder if there's going to be one of you. He says, many, many will say to me in that day. And, he, and, and, and all, but they start telling them what all they've done. Many are going to do that. But the Lord's going to look and say, I never knew you. I wonder if there's anybody sitting here that in your heart of hearts, and see, that's not something that your neighbor can say or that I can say for you. I can't tell you you're saved or tell you you're lost. But if in your own heart you're honest enough to say, man, that's really never happened to me. I hadn't been saved. And, I, and, and then you're honest enough to say, and I certainly don't want to die that way and have this happen to me one day. 
then you know what can happen? You can, you can get saved. You can do it today. I remember the day I got saved. It's just the day that I turned my heart to God. And I said, Lord, I'm not going to tell you no. I'm going to put my faith in you. I'm going to ask you to save me. I got men right here, men that could take the Bible if you're not saved and they could show you. But see, here's the thing. You're, what's going to happen is, is on, when a man stands before God, I believe the Lord. When he says, Lord, I, 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 Lord I, 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 you remember I, I, I was saved. You I? God, can, God will show you every chance. He'll show you this day. He'll, in your, he'll be able to replay this, and he'll show you sitting where you're sitting, me up here with the Bible. He'll show you not just what you, were, what you were heard, but what you were thinking and what was going on in your heart. He'll show you at the point that you were like, no, man, I'm too embarrassed. I, I, I'm not getting saved. I'm not raising my hand. I'm not saved. He'll show you that one day. Whew. We'll stand before God with no excuse. We can't say, yeah, but I, he's like, because he's showing you your heart. He showed you where you and your own heart said no. But see, on the other side of that, it's a blessing when God, as he looks at our heart and looks at our record, when God says, oh, I see the day that you chose to get honest with me. And you admitted you were a sinner on your way to hell. And I see the day where you bowed on your knees and with all your heart, you put your faith in my son, Jesus. You see, God's got a record of it. And one day, when we stand before God, I tell you, you know why we run buses and why we do everything that we do? We want you all to be saved. And then if you are saved, man, I want you to live for God. I want you to be the Christian God wants you to be. But I wonder, bow your head and close your eyes, and let me ask you if, you, if you've ever been honest, would you be honest on this afternoon? You know, if I was lost and I heard, I heard somebody preaching and dealing with these verses, I'll be honest with you, there'd be a fear in my heart. There'd be a fear in my heart. And I'd, hey, i tell you what I'd do if I were you. I would be honest enough to raise my hand and say, you know what? I don't care if I said I saved 20 times. I, if, I, if, I, hey, if I knew I wasn't saved, I'm telling you, I would, I would raise my hand and say, okay, I'm going to admit that today. I'm not playing around with this another day. I wonder if there's a young lady or a young man that would be honest. Every head is bowed. No one's looking. If you would raise your hand and say, preacher, honestly, I'm afraid that if I stood before God, he would have to say, I never knew you. Raise your hand. Let me see it. Nobody's going to, I just want to see it. Raise it up. Quickly, just raise it up. Is there, a, is there a young man first or a young lady, either one? Preacher, I do not believe I've been saved. I don't want to die like this. Hey, I just, I, I don't believe that I have. Raise your hand. Let me just see it. Is there just one? Then let me ask you this. How many would say, Preacher, I really, with all my heart, I remember a time when I asked the Lord to come in my heart. And the more you've preached on this, the more I, the Lord's just really nailed it down. I really know that I am saved. Raise your hand if you know that. Raise it up. Let me see. All right, God bless you. There's hands up everywhere. I appreciate that. Ladies, let me look over here. Raise your hand if you honestly know there's a time where you did that. All right, good. Now I want to ask you this. Not then are you saved. I want to ask you, are you living a life that you believe is pleasing to God? Or would you say, preacher, there's some things in my life that if I had to stand before God, I'd want to clean them up before I stand before God. If you've got some things you need to clean up in your life, raise your hand. Let me see it. Hands are up everywhere. God bless you. Raise it up high. Let's see. Let's see if you just be honest then why don't you make your way down to this altar right now? Come on, you just raised your hand. Let's be honest enough to get down here and talk to God. Come on, come on. If you mean that, I mean, if you mean that, if you just raised your hand to raise it, uh, I hate that. But if you, if you raised it, you honestly want to get some things clean with God and get some things right with Him, good. Let's get down here right now. Come on. Come on, girls, that's fine. You want to pray? You come on. It's up to you. Nothing wrong with getting down and praying. See, when you do business with God, the Bible says if we confess our sins, He's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I'm glad the Lord can clean our hearts. I'm glad that He can clean things out of our life. One day we will meet God. Man, don't let, let's don't meet Him with unconfessed sin. If you need 
need one of our men just to come pray with you about something. Hey, if you would raise your hand, they'll come down here and just get next to you and just pray with you. If you need that, hey, we'll have the ladies. Ladies, we'll have a lady come down and pray with you if you need that. You just slip your hand up and we'll send somebody over there, though. That's fine. If you need that, you just let me know. Otherwise, let's all pray together right now, can we? Let's all pray together. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord, for these young men and these young ladies. Thank you for them listening to your words so intently. Dear Lord, I pray if there's a young man or young lady that for whatever reason did not raise their hand but they know they're lost, please, please, please let them come to one of the workers, one of the bus workers. Please let them come, Lord, and Lord, uh, and ask and say, please talk to me. Please tell me about the Lord. I, I, I'm not saved. I didn't raise my hand in there, but I'm really not saved, and I need some help. But God, these that are saved, help them, Lord. Help them, Lord, to get the things out of their life that they're trying. They want to live a clean life. These young men and young ladies want to be the Christian you want them to be. And I pray, Lord, that you'd help them right now. But I love you. And I know that, Lord, you love them. And, Lord, I'm glad they love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you for choosing to watch this sermon preached at Heritage Baptist Church. Heritage Baptist Church is located at 1843 Peaksville Road, Locust Grove, Georgia, 30248. You can contact us at 770-320-7771. Visit us on the web at hbcga.com. Jeremiah chapter 6 verse 16a says, Thus saith the Lord, Stand ye in the ways, and see, and ask for the old paths, where is the good way, and walk therein, and ye shall find rest for your souls. Proverbs chapter 22 verse 28 says, Remove not the ancient landmark which thy fathers have set. Here at Heritage Baptist Church, we still have old-fashioned preaching and singing, and we believe in the verbal, plenary inspiration of the Holy Scriptures of the Old and New Testaments, and that they compose the entire Word of God. The scriptures are inerrant, infallible, and God-breathed, and therefore are the final authority for faith and life. The 66 books of the Old and New Testaments are the complete and divine revelation of God to man. The scriptures shall be interpreted according to their normal grammatical historical meaning. The King James Bible shall be the official and only English translation used by Heritage Baptist Church. We look forward to seeing you at our next service here at Heritage Baptist Church.